Tommy Aikono, and I broke the one act that you're about to say. <laughs> I'm Noah Newton, and I don't know how to walk more. <laughs> uh, so, this is my uh, co director, Noah Newton, as he said. Um, and the one act that you're about to see, um, it follows four friends throughout their high school career and their um, misshapen relationship, and uh, also some uh, other characters that I hope you find funny. Um, doesn't really need much more introduction than that, so without further ado, we present School Baggage. Uh, get back to class or something? Yeah. Bye, Bye. Bye. 
smart to figure something like that out? Sexy. 
and just spotted two fine vessels off the starboard bow. <laughs> Any classes together? Oh, 
Mom just found the tracer. Are they serious? We have zero classes together. We don't have any. Yeah, that's what zero means. <laughs> this year's going to be the worst. Right? Is Maroon? He's called Candy at 381. <laughs> <laughs>
clarinet? Is it a sax? No, it's just the max. <laughs>
I don't know if she was angry at me for you know something I did, or she was angry at me for no reason, or just you know just something girls do. You know? I don't understand women. Maybe I should ask uh, Max for advice, huh? <laughs> That'd be funny. Why Max? So, I don't know. He's, he's always talking about how he gets women and knows how to handle like women friends. And I think it's a bunch of BS if you ask me. He's so convincing. With Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Do you have his number? <laughs> you can't be serious. <laughs> of course I'm not serious. Me with Max, light enough, Steve. Take a joke. Okay, well, anyway, those are my problems, okay? So do you have any advice? When I was a fellow... All right, wait, before you go on, please, please, don't make this about you, okay? When I was with Philip... <laughs> I would flip out at him all the time. And he knew it was because I loved him or that he did something wrong. No, that's not the point. I yelled at him a lot. And even though I was always screaming at him, no, ignore that. I controlled him and always told him what to do so he realized how much he needed me. Wait, that doesn't work either. Ignore everything I just said. None of that happened. <laughs> all right, class, the bells aren't working today, but class is dismissed. So, go to the cafeteria or something. My plane is leaving in an hour, so I'm leaving now. And the school day just started. Look, who's in charge here? Me, exactly. All right, well, thanks for listening to my problems, I guess. I'm such a good person. <laughs> To whoever is riding a horse through the halls, please go home. <laughs> Who are you?
Thank you, Alex. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've all been enjoying the show this far. Our next presentation infuses a sense of comedy, drama, and a bit of individualism. Special thanks to our co-directors, Ms. Brown, our advisor, and most importantly, our dear commit principal, Mr. Fagan, who has worked tirelessly in his first year as principal in our school. Um, so thank you, and enjoy identity. <laughs>
Exactly. That's why we need to always do our job as well as possible. I love you, Susie, and I don't want to see you hurt by that. You're right, Samuel. We can't doubt our work anymore. We are servants of the government, and its will comes before ours. Let's get back to work. Why? 
while I do have the intelligence to look into my problems on my own, I need some support in order to quicken the process. You, Kana, have finally developed skills in the art of computer technology, while you, Ace, have a stellar memory and great logical skills. Thank you, Jin. Not nearly as much as yours, though. Yeah. But, uh, I already mentioned the situation. Yeah, you see, I believe my parents keep keeping secrets. Oh, please. Everyone has secrets. Well, I normally wouldn't care, but these secrets are most likely about me. It seems my parents are doing some sort of test on me and are creating some sort of report for a certain kind of boss. Couldn't these just be, I don't know, medical tests? I thought about that, but that's not likely. Since they were also talking about a boss and a report, and they generally work independently of a hire. My parents always acted a little different and over-friendly around me, but I never heard them talk about me like this before. It was so, so suspicious. What I wanted to get more information the only problem is, I don't know how to access my parents' research. Well, seeing as how your parents are two of America's top scientists, this could be a little difficult. Yeah, but uh, then again, we can't forget that I'm the best 17 year old around. Oh no, we never forget something like that, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, I developed a plan in which will infiltrate my parents' laptop, hack through the encryption. Of course, our way to research, which will then pop the boy drive. Um, doesn't that sound a little harsh? I mean, couldn't we at least try and negotiate with them? I wish we could do that, Ellie, but I can't just let go of the paranoia that our parents are, are keeping secrets from me. We need to do everything possible to make sure that my vision is clear. So, let me guess. You probably got some sort of distraction plan for your folks then, right? Yeah. And did you just say folks? I'm surprised people still didn't use that word. Don't do it again! One of us will make it with my parents in order to bring their attention away from the technology. Since I've never had to look before, they'll be delighted to see that I'm actually socializing with those beneath my intelligence. But since that's the hardest job, I need someone who's easily presentable to my parents. That's why I like knowledge you can my girlfriend.
finally showing interest, and so sudden, too. I can't believe it. He's becoming so different, so nice, so dreamy. He's always been the best one, the greatest of us growing up beside him, I've never seen him fall. But now it seems he's changing, could he really have feelings for me? There might just be a chance that Jerry really cares for me.
Um, hey, Jay, I just found a letter. And it says that it's signed by the president. And it's to your parents. Go on, Hannah, please. All right. It says, Subject Jayon's remarkable skills shows us what the power of science can bring about Dr. and Dr. Kumo. Ever since we entrusted the infant to you two, we've only seen improvement on his contribution to the scientific community as an experimental test subject. However, we will only achieve success if we take full control of the subject once more. I know you two would rather have him for a little longer, but based on your reports, the egocentric and arrogant subject will not be a great loss. <laughs> Looking forward to seeing more results from the two of you. I, I, um, I'm, I'm sure they're doing fine, doctors. There's really no need to check on them. Well, I might as well go out there just to stretch my legs. <laughs> that won't be necessary, doctor. There might be kumquats. Yeah, and kumquats are very bad. <laughs> Best not to get near those kumquats. Helen, are you okay? I'm fine, as long as the kumquats are coming for them. That would be very bad. <laughs> Let's go outside. It's a beautiful day, even though it's raining. Um, <laughs> far away from the kumquats. What nonsense are you talking about? There aren't any kumquats. Jay, Jay, something's up. We need to go. Yeah. Like, right now. Okay, okay. Okay, I'm packing up. Hold on. All right. Done and done. All right. I upload all the files onto the drive. We're done here. Let's go. Come on, Jay. Cyrus is doing 
I go where I want to, sweet cheeks. So long as government corruption does not exist. <laughs> and besides, you can't stop us. Cause we can't stop. <laughs> and we won't stop. <laughs> can't you see it's we? Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> Melody, that's Julian Assange, the founder of WikiLeaks, that anti-government group that finds government secrets. And that's Miley Cyrus. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even going to explain that one. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, I thought you were supposed to be a guy. That's just to throw off the government. Huh. And I thought you were supposed to be a girl. What are you talking about? I <laughs> <laughs>
I'm on the ledge. Sir, would you please step away from the ledge? Okay. Are you away from the ledge? Yes. Sir, would you please go back inside the building? Okay. Where are you now? I'm in my apartment. That's good. Now, why did you want to jump in the first place? Be because, because there's so much darkness. Sir, this is what I want you to do. Take deep breaths again, okay? In and out. In and out. Where is the darkness? It, it's everywhere in my life. So every day, this cute girl comes in and orders the same exact thing. Coffee with cream and two sugars. Every day we talk a little bit more. I know her name's Haley and she's in college and she has a job somewhere doing something. What else? Oh, her favorite color is black. She told me she doesn't like to pick favorites, so she just blends them all together to get black, I guess. I told her it was just a color orgy, but yeah, she's pretty chill.
this seemed to have lost my mind. Could I have yours? <laughs> Are you trying to get my number? Maybe. Okay. Give me your arm. What? Why? So I can write my number on it. Duh. <laughs> Isn't that kind of cheesy? Sorry, coming from the guy who used the uh, cheesiest pickup line ever. Got Haley's number. This guy. I'm so smooth. I'm like a snake. Stars. Aren't they just beautiful? 
Yeah. Yeah, they really are. <laughs> hey, look. It's Iron's belt. You mean Orion's belt? No. No, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Iron's belt. Yeah, yeah, he was... He was this big ironer from Rome, and what was the side for? You're wrong. I'm not wrong. Come on, just, just listen to me, please. Anyway, he was this big ironer from Rome, and he went to fight in... Uh, um... A war. How do you... How do you think it's Orion's boat, if you already know it? It starts with O. Oh, it's no. Orion. Anyway... He brought all his iron with him, and, and all his opponents, they had iron marks on their face. Oh! <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, actually, actually, um, yeah. Death by iron. It's, it's a pretty sucky way to die. You're so smart. I know. <laughs> hey! Look, the, the Big Dipper. Yeah. It's a good thing. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so, do you find your roof often? Yeah, yeah. Me and this roof. We've been through a lot together. Hey, look! Haley's coming. <laughs> Dear Diary, me and that waiter, we really hit it off. He just, we just kind of get each other, you know what I mean? The other night he thought he saw Haley's comet, but I didn't have the heart to tell him it was just an airplane. On another note, fate has been making progress. He calls every night, and each time we talk a little bit more. I told him he just needs to find a light in the darkness, and things won't be so dark anymore. He said he would work on that, and then he hung up. Overall, though, definitely making progress. Morning, James. <laughs> James. Someone called the fire department 
because the next thing I knew, they were there running in my house in their suits and, and trying to put out the fire with their long hoses. And I remember sitting in my front yard waiting, waiting for what seemed like forever. I was scared and, and I couldn't do anything. After they put the fire out, my house was destroyed and, and my entire family, my mom, my dad, my, my two older brothers, even, even my little sister, my little sister Grace, they, they all died. At the funeral, I didn't say anything, I, I just sat there and cried. No one comforted me because no one was there but, but me and the priest. Both my parents were only children and all my grandparents were dead long before I was born. I, I was put into a foster home and I moved around a lot. I just I couldn't find a place that worked for me. When I turned 18, I traveled on what I had, but I didn't have money for college. I didn't have a job. I just, I didn't know where to go in life. No matter how bright everything seemed around me, I, I would always see the smoke. It, it, it turned every, everything dark. wanted it to be light. Well, well, everyone always jokes not to go toward the light, so, so I thought, well, maybe that's what I should do. But, but you didn't. No, I didn't. That's great. <laughs> How am I, you ask? Well, I'm just Mr. Fantastic. <laughs> right now, life's going great. I mean, I've got a job. Awesome. I'm going to college with a lot of student loans, but besides that, awesome. I've got a girlfriend. <laughs> I mean, at least. I think she's my girlfriend. I mean, it's official on Facebook. That's credible enough, right? <laughs> but putting that complex question aside, awesome. Life's just, life's just really going swell right now. Did, did I just use the word swell? <clears throat> That's like a 1950s word. This is what writing's doing to me! <laughs> what happened? You fell asleep. I didn't want to wake you up. Uh, how long was I out? Um, well, it's been like two hours. Two hours? Jeez, um, yeah, yeah. Frank, what time is it? Um, it's like 1.45 in the morning. Why? I have to go. I, I have to get to work.
still have an hour of work left. I just came to tell you I can't see you anymore, Frank. What? 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 Is this because I didn't wake up the other day? Because I swear, if you got in trouble with your boss, I will personally write him a letter telling him it was my fault. No, it's not that. Am I a bad boyfriend? No, Frank. I didn't get a phone call last night. You didn't get a phone call last night? Yes. And that's why you can't see me anymore? Yes, because it changed my life. I'm sorry. Wait, wait. How did this change your life? Because it made me lose my faith. And they lived happily ever after. 